Hi, I'm Dr. Frederick Mashili, a lecturer in the Department of Physiology at the Muimbili University of Health and Alliance Sciences. I'm interested in exercise and endocrine physiology, cardiovascular physiology, excitable tissues, or muscle physiology, as well as respiratory physiology. One of the easiest topics in physiology is endocrine physiology. But what I have learned over time, my students fail to see this as one of the easiest topics simply because they fail to organize different hormones into groups. By organizing different hormones into groups, it makes it easy to understand their characteristics and their metabolism in general. So I have decided to create this series of lectures, very short, just trying to explain some of what I think are the fundamental concepts in endocrine physiology. These lectures can be as important to a practicing clinician as they are to a first year medical student. So at one point in time, we have, we have all asked ourselves one of the following questions. One, why can't insulin be administered orally? We know that insulin is given by injection and not orally. What are the reasons? Number two, how come the half-life of thyroid hormone can be as long as six days while that of no epinephrine can only be a few seconds? What is the reason? Number three, how come insulin has a membrane receptor while thyroid hormones do have nuclear receptors? Why are these differences? Number four, why some hormones need transport protein in the circulation, for example, thyroid hormone, while others like insulin circulate freely in plasma. So what a student can think here is you need to understand each and every characteristic of each and every hormone. That is important, but it's difficult. So there's a way to simplify this. And one of the important concepts that will actually help you to simplify this is to group the hormones based on their chemical nature. So you need to understand the chemical nature of different hormones. And from the chemical nature of these hormones, you can actually form groups. And by understanding the characteristics of a particular group of hormones, you can actually tell a lot about specific hormones. So this is the reason I have created a series of these lectures, which will be simply the fundamental concepts in endocrine physiology, so that students, as well as practicing clinicians, will be able to explain some of the concepts in the clinics or in the classes. Thank you very much.